This is what we're going to do. It's time. It's Among Us time. So this is the rise and fall of Game Grumps from Gaming Channel to Toxic. Wow. Incredible. You think maybe um, gaming channels are just toxic? Saying, dude. I don't know. Maybe. Some, some game culture can be. Anyway. Um... Wasn't John Tron in Gamer? Isn't John? Then he had that really uh, suspicious conversation with Destiny. Yeah. Maybe that's it. Gentlemen, Internet of Jay here, your rickshaw driver for today. Oh, you're Jump low. on in and I'll drive you Let's straight into this video. Too. Game Grumps is a gaming YouTube channel with about 5.37 million. Are you serious? Or a gaming YouTube channel? Are you serious, Jay? Subscribers as of today. However, since early 2021, the channel has pretty much stagnated. Their yeah. decline was a slow bleed due to a series of. Wait, wait, what is why, why is that a decline? However, since early 20. <laughs> <laughs> what the 2021 the channel has pretty much stagnated oh i think stagnation isn't really a decline necessarily but this looks like they've lost followers for a bit i guess there's a controversy here their decline was a slow bleed due to a series of controversies involving racism uh, inappropriate sexual conduct and doxing sounds just like sounds just like a game sounds just like gaming I'm not surprised. This is the rise and fall of Game Grumps. Before I get into it, I want to ask, are you looking for a cool mobile game with no. badass champions, tough bosses, and millions of players? Not at all. Well, look no further because Raid Shadow Legends has it all. Caught in the middle of an epic struggle that's raged for thousands of years, you'll fight noble kings and dark wizards. You'll uncover prophecies, you, curses, betrayals, and meet more than 12 warring factions. My personal favorite thing about Raid is the intricate storylines and cool- I don't- I'm not interested in warring factions, but I am interested in whoring factions, if you know what I'm saying, brother. <laughs> oh, it just- it just brings you to shade- Shade rat, Rattle Legend. Raid Shadow Legend. Well, champions. Use my QR code or links below to download Raid to your mobile phone or PC. Death Knight is one of Raid's most beloved characters, so despite everyone's expectations to see the Death Knight as an upgraded legendary champion, Raid actually decided to create a brand new Ultimate Death Knight champion that is now taking over the game. He is definitely- Did you just reference World of Warcraft? Raid champion is one of Raid's most beloved characters, so despite everyone's expectations to see the Death Knight as an upgraded legendary champion, Raid actually decided to create a brand new Ultimate Death Knight champion that is now taking over the game. He is oh. definitely someone you would like to- Sounds- Sounds interesting. That they're creating a Death Knight character as they re-release the classic World of Warcraft expansion that introduced the net Death Knight to World of Warcraft. I wonder if there's a little suspicion going on there. He you know, in battles. Yeah. He increases the squad's defense by 30% and completely blocks one hit, decreasing the damage by zero when one of the allies is attacked. He took damage on that, bro. What are we talking about? This champion has an amazing skill called Rats Off Tia. This AoE skill is a tribute to Mr. Nibbles, a pet of OG Death Knight. The whole raid community has been waiting okay. for this for a very long time, and the ultimate Death Knight is everything we hoped for. He's poised, he's powerful, he's we? perfect, and the best part is everyone can get him for free. Just log in and play raid for seven days between now and October 27th, and you'll get ultimate Death Knight easy. You can also use the DK Rises promo oh, code for a bunch of free items that instantly level your new strongest wow. champion all the way to level 50 and 5 star ascension. But wow, sounds cringe. Wait, there's more. This month, Raids just released a giant new feature, Awakening Dude, in a Brutal New Dungeon, the Iron Twins Fortress. There's never been a better time you to You know, get I'm trying to watch everybody's uh, ads when I do reaction because I figure it's the least I can do, but oh my lord. Come on, bro. This is going fucking kooky bananas. Started. New players, use my link or scan the QR code right here and get a free starter pack worth almost $30, a free champion Virgies, and also this cool in-game loot. You'll find $30. these rewards in your inbox for the next 30 days only. Lit. Now back to the video. The two started out by uploading multiple Damn. Let's Play and gaming videos. It was clear from the get-go the two right, got along let's better. See how, let's see how these guys are doing. So we got some good... These guys still pull good views per video. What do they post? Like a video a day? We'll say about 300,000 videos. You know, some of these are a little lower and newer, but they'll probably go up there. Whoa, that looks sexy. Um, yeah, they get their views are solid. I feel like we have like a weird standard for what falling off is. <clears throat> these guys are posting half-hour videos, pulling like a hundred, like a lot of views. Some of this stuff is a little too horny, though. I don't understand that. Like, this is like one of the weird things. Um, let's see. Let's put most popular in there. I mean, yeah, they have videos with like millions and millions of views, but I feel like you can't always maintain like top tier views. You know, you'll burn out at some point for some reason. You know what I mean? I feel like it's just the nature of the beast. Hey, look, they got uh, this guy in there. I like this guy. <laughs> they edit. Oh, granny back. Trying to hit Y? To. No? I wouldn't watch that either. Okay. Better than Belle Delphine and Bathwater. I mean, they sometimes even randomly broke out into song. Wow. Viewers were engrossed with the dirty humor and cursing paired with fun gameplay. It was like watching two friends just hang out. Cool. Not that I would know anything about having friends, though. Pause balls, I'm going upstairs. Pause balls, I'm going downstairs. That's the best strategy in the game. I'm going to go upstairs <laughs> and watch for fun. Adding that was, uh, people watch that? Well, I wonder why I don't get more views. I don't, I don't get it. Variety, Game Grumps played Kirby Superstar, Pokemon Emerald, Mega Man, and oh. more. What's funny is they played all the games I sourced my background music from. Over time, their videos okay. garnered millions of views and the channel exploded like a horny teenager who just discovered the internet. In addition, Game Grumps fans- Hey, porn is bad. 
Okay, don't look at it. It's right for you. ...were known for being extremely loyal and even had a dedicated subreddit chock full of art. The frenzy was so intense, one fan tried to grab Aaron on stage. Reddit, Reddit is a problem, bro. We gotta not have a Reddit, okay? Very toxic. Whoa! Well, we shouldn't be championing this moment. This is a clear violation of boundaries. I'm not even making a joke here. It's a little bizarre. And not to be that guy, but if the roles were reversed, people would be much more outraged by this. You know, it's never appropriate in public to touch somebody without them wanting you to touch them. Um, that's called boundary setting, and there's a lot of people who seem to struggle with boundaries on the fucking internet. In 2013, the Game Grumps surprised everyone when they announced they would be uploading daily instead of twice daily. Due to circumstances okay. beyond our control, we have to return to one a day Grumps. Please bear with us, we're doing the okay. best we can. Later in July 2013, just one year after the channel's inception, John revealed he was leaving to focus on his own channel. Okay, so I wanted to make, I wanted to make like, you know, like a scene. Wow, John, you were very loud, but it's not really your fault. I don't know why Jay couldn't normalize that a little bit. Season two John Tron, because as far as I, I'm, I know there's no seasons on YouTube, but you know, like, <laughs> season two. And if it's not, if it's not John Tron, it's just probably going to be John Tron. It's going to be something else, but I want to put my full focus in something. And, um, you know, maybe we'll meet again someday. Or probably not because I'm just one guy and there's a lot of you out there. So probably not. Like, I watched some, I used to watch Jonathan all the time, but after that fucking conversation with Destiny, he's such a cringe fuck. He's such a dumb fucking racist. <laughs> I don't even think he's a bad guy. I just think he's a really dumb fucking racist. Um, and he's like, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Like, he's. He's fucking stupid. <laughs> John Ron's abrupt departure led to speculation oh. so intense it spawned an entire subreddit called Conspiracy Grumps. I told you fans were loyal. Interestingly, one prominent theory for John's exit was that something happened at E3 which took place two weeks prior to his goodbye video. Credence for this theory bolstered when John himself commented on the Reddit post about it saying, damn, you guys are good. However, John's girlfriend at the time, Nicole Sanchez, later debunked that theory. Currently, why John left is still a mystery which led some- John, I can't believe you were dating a Hispanic person, you racist. I thought you fucking, I thought you didn't want, I thought you believed in the great replacement theory that there's too many Hispanic people coming over here. We need to maintain a white country. Lose trust in Game Grumps due to their lack of transparency. John Tron was, was later replaced by Dan, aka Danny Avedon. And while this okay. later proved not to be the world's best choice, that did you say Dan, aka, and then his full name? That's why John left is still a mystery, which led some to lose trust in Game Grumps due to their lack of transparency. John Tron was later replaced by Dan, aka Danny Avedon. Is this Danny Avedon like a game name? Because usually you don't use somebody's nickname as like an aka. Okay. And while this later proved not to be the world's best choice, that's because on August 15, 2015, in the game... Well, what the fuck were they supposed to do? What are they supposed to do? They, like, I think if they oh. left, they got to replace it with somebody, and it's never going to... Nobody's ever going to, like, be okay with it. You know what I mean? Like, things will never be the same, but you got to keep on keeping on, you know? ...part 32 Sonic video, Danny docks the creator of a walkthrough. Oh, you shit. see, Danny and Aaron were playing the Emerald Treasure level where the Emerald's location was randomized. Okay. So the walkthrough author didn't mention where it was as the location changed, which frustrated Danny. In yeah. response, Danny revealed his full name and even encouraged hate. Mind you, the author Wait, wrote it 11 years prior, all the way back in 2004. What the fuck is wrong with him? <laughs> like, what is actually wrong with this guy? <laughs> Hold on, I'm. What the fuck help does he think he's providing anybody? If he gets a wave of hate from our fans, won't he be surprised 11 years later? Adding insult to injury, Danny and Aaron roasted the author for dedicating the walkthrough to his friend Michelle by saying he must have hated her because it was so bad. I. <laughs> Sounds pretty bad. I know that uh, Jay's not going to play the clip of him, like, doxing the guy. Uh, or saying his name like doxing the guy because um he doesn't want to signal boost it so i respect that but like i don't know the context of what they said it if it was on purpose was this on a live stream because these dumb fucks really shouldn't have made this about that but this faq is dedicated to my friend michelle who has stuck with me laughed at all my lame jokes and humored me a lot more than i actually deserve and she was also really impressed when i wrote this walkthrough i mean he must have hated her considering the quality <laughs> of this walkthrough <laughs> It's kind of funny though. Okay, what is unless she was like, if if he did, I'm dedicating this to whoever because uh, she's dying of cancer. I'd be like, that's really sad. I respect that. But he's just like, oh, she was nice to me. She was supportive. And then they're like, well, this walkthrough sucks. So fuck you. I was like, okay, that's fair. Like, I mean, whatever. I don't. Sadly, he was docs, which led to the Game Grumps uploading a new version where they bleeped out his name. Yeah, the that should have happened. Oh, so yeah, that's the biggest problem. They said his name without bleeping it. Like, that's how the fuck do you even fuck that up? The second that you said his full name, you should have known to to bleep that out. Cause that's the really the only issue I would have with that you stupid assholes i would imagine that was some oversight uh but like you're really irresponsible you stupid fuck later went on reddit and revealed he wrote the walkthrough while he was still in middle school luckily though he did mention dan That's apologized fair. to him the whole situation made the game grumps look like careless bullies surprisingly the yogurt in the i feel like it wasn't that big of a deal, but i guess i wasn't there when it happened so. biryani was far more sour than met the eye it turned out aaron had a prolific history of saying the n-word this was particularly yeah
really ironic because he disparaged his friend Axel for doing the same thing. Oh, and by the way, there's an entire three minute long um, compilation of Aaron using the word. Well, Axel dropped a lot of N-bombs back in the day, so I've never really been a fan of his either. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I can see the hypocrisy. Listen, man, like a lot of people say, I, you know, when I was younger, I would say it when I would play video games with my other white friends, we just thought it was an edgy word. And I obviously regret doing that. But I wouldn't, like, you know, like, you gotta maintain consistent energy, you know? That's why when I see edgy kids online, like, I'm not as, like, oh, they're terrible people. I'm like, ah, oh, you guys just gotta grow up and, like, stop saying words like the Arsler and shit. I wouldn't either. As jarring as the clips were to hear, Aaron supposedly doesn't say the N-word anymore. Interestingly, though, despite his past, he was accused of hypocritically... I supposedly don't say it anymore either. I can't blink because I have, like, dicks. God damn it. Say it. Unless I'm singing Childish Gambino, then I or uh, Mario Judah, but you, you have to give me a pass on that one. Siding against JonTron when he made several shocking comments about race and immigration. It all started in June 27, wow. hypocritically siding against JonTron when he made several shocking comments. Um, more. Interestingly, though, despite his past, he was accused of hypocritically siding against JonTron when he made several shocking comments about race and immigration. Let me tell you something. There's a profound difference between like throwing around the N word when you're younger, which is stupid, ignorant, you never should have done it, versus JonTron legitimately talk about how we have to preserve a white America. Those are very different things, okay? Those are two very different <laughs> situations. It's not really hypocritical. That's fucking crazy. Uh -huh. Have you watched it? I actually did commentary on it. You can just look at Papa got John Trump. It's that's a, it's a little bit more tense. Like there's a there's a spectrum here of racism. It's certainly worse. Um, but okay. It all started in June 2017 when John Tron wrote this on Twitter. He, for some reason, vehemently supported the harsh political views held by the far-right U.S. representative, Steve King. This shocked yep. many fans as John was not known for being political. Like, I watched all of the conversation between him and Destiny. You can go watch that conversation, or you just watch my reaction to it. Give me more money. Which would be expected. John would say, like, of course he wants more money, because I'm actually partly ethnically Jewish. So John would say that, like, I'm just a dirty, money, uh, hungering person, you know. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little bit of a joke there. I don't think I remember him making any comments about juice. Due to the tweet, the streamer Destiny challenged him hey. to a debate, which only made things worse when he claimed wealthy blacks were more likely to commit crimes than poor whites. Yeah, I don't think that's true. Okay, so do you think that poor blacks probably commit more crime relative to wealthier black people? Wealthy, bl uh, they do. Wealthy blacks also commit more crime than poor whites. Whoa, it's a crime of them actually being successful, guys, which is a crime in racist America. and racist white America, it's a crime to be wealthy and black. That's a fact. Wait, what? Although John apologized, the Game Grumps distanced themselves from- No, he didn't. He did not apologize. I want to be explicitly clear. I remember this because this is so interesting. I, when I made my um, when I made my video, okay, so let me be clear. Okay, I've got uh, John Tron. Okay, so this is, I actually remember specifically what happened. I made this video, the downfall of John Tron, right? And this is like uh, where I watched like the whole Destiny thing. All right, I remember making this video. And the whole intro will explain everything I'm about to say, but I found a TikTok of like John Tron saying whatever. And then I was actually intending to make a video because I remember I was like, oh, I heard John Tron apologize. So I wanted to make a quick video about how, like, hey guys, like, I know that you guys are saying that, like, you know, he did this thing, but he actually has since apologized and like he's educated himself. When I actually looked into it, he didn't fucking apologize at all. He doubled down. He what he said was like, I'm sorry that like it came off wrong, but I still agree with what I was saying. And I was like, mm, that's that's not an apology. That is like that is not an apology, motherfucker. He has not apologized. He just thinks that he hasn't expressed it in a way where people will be like, "That makes sense," because it doesn't make sense. Okay, it makes it doesn't make sense. That's why. So let's not say he apologizes, motherfucker. Did I fell for it too? So I'm not gonna like blame a Jay, but like he did not apologize, motherfucker, at all. From him, like he was an untouchable from Mumbai. During a panel in December 2017, Dan and Aaron both mentioned they not only disagreed with John, but also weren't planning on having him on guest ground. I this made Aaron look two faced, agree. considering he also made concerning racial comments in the past. What did he say? It was virtue signaling at its finest. Well, what did he say? Was that just like the the N word stuff? Because like again, very there's a difference between like then you shouldn't do it, but there's a difference between when you're younger using like racial slurs, which is wrong. Most of the time, it's people saying it's like their other white friends because they think it's cool and edgy versus actually saying like, 
posting ideas that we should maintain a white America. Like these are very different ideologies. It's not hypocritical. It is unintelligent from people on the online community and them just being like, I like John Tron because his content is good. So I'm going to try to diminish what he had done um, by just having some kind of a blind, unintelligent criticism for everything. These two things are very different. They are a drastically different motherfucker. I just want you to know. In 2020, Aaron tweeted to ask if he should make a statement about the Black Lives Matter movement. Gamergrunts has received many requests to make a statement about BLM. I am supportive of BLM personally. I would porn because Gamer is a brand, not a person. Would you love to hear y'all thoughts on this? Please let me know. That's just a weird thing to ask. What? That's a now th this is like a weird, dumb question to ask, right? So like do it or don't. Both of those from a business perspective, fine. Do your thing. You could make a thing saying like we're in support of BLM as a company or you could say that you're not in support, I suppose, if you want, but you're going to get shit on or just don't talk about it. Those are all fine responses, but asking your audience saying, I like BLM. What do, you, do you guys think that I should make this fun like, business? Just don't do that. Make the decision, own it, and like move on. Um, but you're going to get a pretty resounding no from your audience because, again, it's gaming and it's a bit regressive. So. Movement. Then the next day, he made a pro-BLM statement and apologized for the past racism on Game Grump, taking uh, everything a step further. Okay, I want to see if I can Then the next this. day, he made a pro- The next day... Uh, okay, you can't really see any of this stuff. Fuck white supremacy. Wow, based. BLM Horse statement and apologize for the past racism on Game Grump. Taking everything a step further, Aaron yeah. even removed multiple problematic videos, which resulted in a loss of about 40 million channel views. Okay, well, I guess that's good. However, fans discovered that only videos with anti-black sentiments were removed while those disparaging other races weren't. For example, Game Grumps appeared to have no problem reinforcing negative Asian stereotypes. Hi, oh, he is Chinese. He Lu. Oh, I wasn't my just being racist. God. Uh, hi, Dad Young <laughs> Wasn't even being racist. <laughs> oh, hello! <laughs> what is your? That's a little racist. Mario, oh my God, this is. I'm sorry. God, <laughs> you should have removed. I mean, I, I'm assuming that they would per perpetuate racist black stereotypes as well. Like, yeah, you got to do all or nothing, brother. You either uh, personally, <laughs> this is so fucked up. Personally, I would just be like, hey guys, like I'm leaving my shit up because that's that's what I was at the, in the past. But I've changed and evolved, whatever. But like now, you're gonna get yourself stun locked. If you're an edgy gaming channel, half your videos are probably fucking racist in some capacity. You really probably should not have done this shit. Um, Sorry. Quadriplegic. What? Oh. What? <laughs> What the word come out of my mouth? I don't know. In 2019, oh Aaron even pulled a John Tron by saying this about a female video game character. Oh shit. So, technically, we should call this in to port authorities as an unreported wreck. Oh, yeah, Maybe we should you. report you as an undocumented yeah. immigrant from wherever you are. <laughs> yeah. It was evident. Okay. Like, it's not. <laughs> Listen, I don't understand. Listen. Okay. I get it. Like, they should have removed all the racism stuff. I get that. I understand some of the criticism. But, bro, it's not the same as what John Tron did. It's not That joke is not the same as literally saying that we need to make a white America. Like, I just feel like I'm fucking being gaslit in real time. There's no... This, I really wouldn't call this a hypocrisy. I would say that the BLM shit was kind of a virtue signal for them to post about it and then, like, only remove, like, the racist black ones, whereas they, uh, there are, you know, other fucking shit. And, uh, you know, there's other stereotypes that are being played upon because that's, like, inconsistent and it just kind of comes off that you just we're like riding the trend rather than actually trying to be like anti-racism in some capacity but like come on this is not these are not these are not the same thing then that video that comment is not the same thing as the john tron okay it's not the same thing and i would argue that there's a lot of people who are like they enjoy some like racial humor and having fun but they would be like yeah that's going too far because it's not a joke he actually thinks that we should fucking only have like we have we should have a white america so yes, it's both racist. Thank you. But if you have like, if you actually like sit down for like the three seconds and think about it, the implications are very different. One person says we need to have a white America. The other person's making a, a, a silly joke about race. Uh, you can think it's wrong and disengage from the content. I understand that hundred percent, but those are not on the same level in any capacity. Okay. Which you just sit down and think, which of those do you think is, is worse? Okay. I don't know. If you think they need to be talked about, that's perfectly fair, you know, but like those things are not the same thing. <laughs> They're certainly not the same thing at all. The Game Grumps didn't truly support an anti-racism movement like BLM, but rather just tried to capitalize on it for their own benefit. See, this came I off as pandering, which was off-putting to many fans. That's fair. Beyond a lot racial... of people were doing that shit when the BLM like sparked up. A lot of people were virtue signaling. Issues, the Game Grumps had sexual ones as well. Oh, and shit. no, not like my blaring impotence, but rather sexual foul play. 
Around the time of the Me Too movement, Dan Avedon was accused of sleeping with younger fans than ghosting them. How old were the fans and how old was he? Mind you, in 2017, Dan was in his late 30s. Okay. While not illegal, his actions were morally questionable. At oh, then I don't care. Not illegal? Like, well, what do you mean by not illegal? Because if, like, if it's not illegal, just in some places, it's not illegal to sleep with 16 or 17 year old. I'd still say that's a moral uh, no no, even if I acknowledge the law supports it. And it's, it needs, it's a whole greater conversation about how we need to change the law about age consent. But if it sounds like what you're saying is that they're over 18, I just don't care. I don't give a shit. Who fucking cares? At the very least, considering he used a parasocial relationship to take advantage of his fans. That is so vague. I just feel like this is uh, stupid. Parasocial relationship to take advantage of his fans. What it sounds like you're saying is that it, uh, consenting adults liked them and it increased them wanting to sleep with him. Like, I don't know what you want me to tell you. That is not the same. That's not taking advantage of your fans. Listen, if, if I was single and some girl ran to me on the street, like, oh my God, Papa God, I like you so much. I was like, you want to go on a date? And they said, yes. I'm not taking advantage of my fan. They like me because I'm accomplished in some capacity. That is not taking advantage of your fans. That is insane. Okay? Like, you guys have to really separate these, like, power. Like, you have to actually engage with what a power dynamic is before talking about this stuff. Because they were 18 or 19. He was 30. Whatever. Okay, whatever. I don't care. She, they're, they're illegal. I personally think it's immature. But, like... Oh, parasocial you're just using the words parasocial like, i don't know what you want me to tell you unless that person is deemed non-consenting by the state or by the government in some capacity whether it's by changing the age of consent to age like increase it which is probably really something we need to do uh because i don't really think somebody like 18 should be sleeping with anybody over the age of 25 personally <clears throat> but anyway or because they have such a significant mental health issue that they are deemed non-consenting by the state what they did is legal and fine and like we're not going to sit here and to like use the word parasocial uh, in some kind of a way to make it seem like this guy's like such a horrible fucking predator like this is ridiculous a blog post written by someone who claimed to have been contacted by many of the women allegedly used by dan wrote as used? far as i've been it sounds like he had casual sex with like fucking illegal adulting fans how come we always do this on the internet but nobody gives a singular fuck about groupies going to any concert I don't understand. Uh, like, why is it like, what's it's only on the internet where it's the terminally online sphere. It's like, oh my God, you did this thing. I'm like, shut the fuck up, bro. If this was the real world, you guys would be, you guys wouldn't give a fuck. Not, not a single person has ever called out like any rock star or groupie <clears throat> at all in any capacity. But for some reason, we're going to call out people for sleeping with legal consenting adults on the fucking internet. It's bizarre. It's fucking unhinged. Able to establish a timeline, he was doing this from late 2013 to 2017 and maybe beyond that. Like it says, women that were at least 15 years younger than him, if not more. It's not illegal, it's just disgusting. Okay, shut up, who cares? If it's not illegal, it's just, okay, shut up. I wouldn't even call it disgusting. Like a 40-year-old man dating, or he was like 38 dating like a 19 or an 18-year-old. I'd say that's immature and like shitty, but disgusting. I wouldn't morally load it so much to like fucking shit and come. Um, first, I think it's more weird than to date them than to just fucking sleep with them because like what the fuck do you have in common but whatever exclusively to fans and exclusively to younger women what uh, exclusively to fans okay, okay women that were at least 15 years younger than him if not more it's not okay. illegal it's just disgusting exclusively to fans what does that mean like he was fucking some of more of his fan i mean i guess he's going to an event and somebody's like i like you a lot and they probably want to fuck him and then he fucks them essentially mm -hmm. okay I don't know. Like, if I was a... Well, okay, like... He used fans, many you. of them, for his own personal intimate okay. one-night stands and then ghosted them because he no longer had a need for them. Uh, they probably were well aware that was going to happen. Um, because he got what he wanted. Uh, they both... Like, do, why, how come, like, why, why do we have this, like, weird... Like, why do we uphold this weird idea that women don't like to have sex? Because that's what this is reading to me. He takes advantage... Like, if he's sitting there saying, like, I, lo I love you, baby girl... I'm going to be with you forever. I'm going to take you on a fucking cruise. And then he fucks him once and he leaves him. Now we're getting into territory of like really shitty behavior. But this guy's probably meeting people at fucking conventions and having sex with these girls. And like, what do you think they're there for? They're there to get fucked by their favorite content creator. And we're pretending like they didn't want to have sex because like women never want to fuck. Women don't. Women are horny as shit. <clears throat> women are horny as fuck all the time. Right? We need to understand this. Women are just as horny as men, if not more so, at least in my experience. I'm just saying. Okay? I'm just saying. So can we stop with this fucking bullshit as virtue signaling? All right? Because actually, if you want to root it down to it, it gets sexist. It weirdly gets sexist. Because you're like, why? Like, like honestly, just knock this shit off. Like, get fuck, go get a girlfriend. Go touch grass. You guys ever, yeah, you guys ever go outside before?
You knock this shit off. Knock this shit off, bro. Long time to talk to John. We're not on bad terms. We're on fine terms. Questionable that he'll be on the show on Guest Grumps uh, due to reason. I don't know what the fuck is being said right now. Longer had a need for them because he got what he wanted. It's been a long time since I talked to John. We're not on bad Oh, John Tron, okay. Terms. We're on fine terms. Questionable that he'll be on the show on Guest Grumps uh, due to recent uh, things that have been said. Yeah, uh, very questionable. Do not agree with any of those things. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are very easily amused, the people clapping. Yeah, I disagree that we should live in an ethno state too. Well, yeah, of course. Like, what a hard stance to take against. Like, like I, I know that sounds stupid. He's like, we obviously disagree with them. They're all like, yes. It's not really them. It's like the reaction. It's like, yeah, that's the expected. Like, if so, if somebody is going on lives talking about how we should have to live in a fucking ethno state, a white only ethno state, and like get rid of immigrants, and you didn't say no to that, like you shouldn't get cheered for on like. Oh, it's like, yeah, okay. Like, why are you guys having that reaction? Why are you making them feel good about that very obvious choice? You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like if uh, someone sneezes and I say, "Go bless you," and the whole room's like, "Oh, oh my God!" This guy just said, "Go bless you." This guy's so fucking brave. I'm like, what are you doing? That's just the expected reaction to have there, bro. Um, if anything, I think saying "Go bless you" is probably more morally virtuous than disagreeing with what's happening here, because that's just such an expected thing. <laughs> You just should. That's just. There shouldn't be any debate about that, you know. Um, it, it was always kind of uh, maybe yes, maybe no. Because of that, like, it's probably a lot closer to no. Shockingly, screenshots uh, of Dan. I wanted to see what their reaction was after he said that. I wanted them to do another rousing thing. Talking to fans later surfaced on. All right, hold on. That like it's probably a lot closer to no. Shockingly, screenshots of Dan talking to fans. Okay, this is Dan talking to fans. Sorry, I'm gonna do one more because time. I'm gonna read that, it. I'm gonna like, read this. It's probably a lot closer to no. Shock. Cool. I'm at the JW Marriott room 2507. Please, I beg you to keep that private. If anyone finds out where I'm staying, I'm done for. That makes sense because, you know, the people will be annoying and crazy. Of course, yo. I'll let you know when I'm heading over. Hooray, thank you. Screenshots of Dan talking to fans later surfaced online. Okay, well, can we read the fucking messages of Jay? Asshole. Going too fast, brother. Uh, this seemed forward, but I'd like to take you out on a date the next time I'm in whatever. Not sure what your life situation is, but if you're open, I think it would be a lot of fun. To be completely honest, even I myself am not sure of something, what my life situation is. Ha, I'd love to hang. I think we'd have a lot of fun. Ha, ha, cool. I'd, I kind of know the feeling. Are you in a, mis my, are you in that mysterious gray haze of, of a kind of relationship. So if so, I've been there and it's not exactly heaps of fun. Well, my best friend and I started a relationship a little over a year ago, which I had never done before. And I don't even know what the fuck that says. Uh, okay. I mean, it seems pretty much just like he's hidden up girls. I can't read faster. It's fucking blurry, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking old. Shut up online after all the evidence came to light one woman came forward with her story saying evidence of what that he hits on he fucks his fans oh no ah. shut up this is also painful to see i Why? can't believe how many other women dan avidan has hurt my you guys are pathetic <laughs> this is so fucking painful that dan had consensual sex with with, with these girls that wanted to fuck him back Oh my god, you gotta think of the real- It changes me like the limited scope of thought from dumb fuck virtue signaling idiot pieces of shit like this because I fucking hate them. I really do because it's not even in their dumb fucking brains that what they're doing is diminishing actual like sexual assault in any capacity. In their head, they're like, well, on the inter on Twitter, the 14 year old uh, said that it's bad um, um, if you uh, fans power dynamics. Oh, God, uh, what's consent mean? No, you can't consent anymore. Power dynamics exist everywhere. That doesn't remove consent. If we really, if you want to stay consistent on power dynamics, motherfucker, rich people can't date poor people. White people can't date black people. Men can't date women because there are all inherent power dynamics there. Okay. Right. Because white people benefit more from systemic racism, which means there's some power dynamic over black people. Right. So guess what? You're anti, you're anti race mixing now because of your stupid fucking power dynamic argument. <clears throat> No race mixing, no class mixing. You, everyone has to be gay. Everybody has to be fucking gay now.
because you have you can't and everybody has to date somebody that's the same height as them, the same weight as them. We have to create some kind of a um way to monitor physical attractiveness when based off of Western beauty standards because somebody more attractive has a power dynamic over somebody else. Okay, that's how far we have to go. That's how far that we have to go here. You see how fucking stupid you are. Two people had consensual sex that were a legal age. If you have a problem with the law, advocate for that. But nobody advocates for that, ever. They just like to fucking virtue signal over this shit. This stuff is dumb as fuck. Shut up. He didn't hurt anybody. Unless his dick was really big and it made them bleed a little bit. In that case, he should have been more careful. Outside of that, you shut up story lines up exactly. He told me he wanted to build an empire with me and that he loved me. He booked fancy hotels in LA for us to have sex in. Wow. Then when I asked if we could be monogamous, I never heard from him again. I guess he's a high value male. Next thing I know, he did the exact same thing to my friend. He told her he dumped me because I was too old. I was 30, he was 38. Okay, whatever. I mean, like, that gets a little bit shitty because he's, I guess, promising you this stuff. If you could show the screenshot... But okay. Dan once even supposedly wished a girl a happy 18th birthday and later established a sexual relationship with her. Important. That's a little creepy, but again, they're legal. So. She denied being groomed, but some remain skeptical considering the timeline of how they met. What? Okay. In February 2020, one of the Game Grumps editors, Ben, revealed he once asked Jacob Sartorius, who was 17 at the time, for nudes and got them plus more. What? What is happening? Hey, what the fuck? Wait, what is happening now? Oh, yeah. Okay, hold on. Game Grumps editors Ben revealed to remain skeptical considering the timeline of how they met. In February 2020, one of the Game Grumps editors Ben revealed he once asked Jacob Sartorius, who was 17 at the time, for nudes and got them plus more. My well, how old was how old was Ben? Ben is an editor? Why would Ben do that? How old was he? Mind you, this dude's handle was Penis Bailey. He also how old was he? tweeted this at Jacob several months later. Me jacking off doing a headstand but naked at Trader Joe's in the frozen turkey section. That seems inappropriate. Ah, yes, my typical Sunday afternoon. It turned out Ben even had a picture with Jacob when he was 14 and tweeted at him several times. Well, that's weird. How old is this guy? Times in the past. It was clear the editor had an obsession with Sartorius, that's which was creepy like, to say yeah, the least. I would agree. I with mean, that. the dude was one. How old is that guy? One tweet away from asking him for cupcakes. After fans. How old was the guy? Is there a way to figure that out? Hillary Plimpton Penis Bailey. <laughs> okay. What? I feel like there's some context missing here. Do we have anything here? How, all right. When he was 14 and tweeted. What did he say? Section. Ah, yes, my typical Sunday afternoon. It turned out Ben even had a picture with Jacob when he was. It is okay to request 17 year old male YouTuber post nudes to the timeline if it's a joke. Oh, I guess his whole thing was he was joking. All right, I mean, maybe. I don't 14 know. 14 and tweeted at him several times in the past. It was clear the editor had an obsession with Sartorius, which was creepy to say the least. Maybe, or maybe this is out of context and he was just fucking joking around. I don't really know. I mean, I honestly don't know how old the guy is. I don't know any of that stuff. I mean, the dude uh, was one tweet away from asking him for cupcakes. After fans nice. pointed out his behavior, Ben sarcastically apologized, but then deleted it. The game grumped. Hold on, I don't him for cupcakes. see that. After fans pointed out his behavior, Ben really sarcastically apologized. That. Yes, the dumb joke I made was so very unwise and dumb. Lessons have been learned. Please accept my sincere apology. Okay, I mean, maybe it was a joke. Maybe he was just pretending to joke because it, we got called like this other person suggesting. I don't really know. Uh, Jay, I feel, not doing a great job at pushing out us information in an unbiased manner, so it's hard for me to know what's going on here. But then deleted it. The Game Grumps channel was also rife with minor controversies just as they were with major ones. There was the okay. time Aaron's wife Susie scammed people on Etsy. The time. Hold on, you're going too fast. Okay, you're saying you're you're giving a breakdown of something. Okay, um, let's see. A lot of people he's looking to discuss Susie's interaction with the fan base. This is how did how did she how did she poten uh, potentially scam her fan base? Like, can you give me my information? At the time, Aaron got upset at a. Fan uh, not in the world, but one that really annoys me when a fan made a goddamn Ross joke in the channel live stream, and while Dan was chill about it, and Ross just said he didn't like it. Aaron basically blows up at the fan says, you don't get to talk to him like that. You're not his friend. Okay, I don't care about that. Um, fan who made a joke about Ross because only he could make those jokes and perhaps most notably of all the garage sale that was basically TanaCon 2.0. Let's okay. talk about that debacle. You see the Game Grumps... Should be a little more specific about all three of those debacles, but okay. ...had a garage sale and for some reason only expected about 100 fans to show up despite their large size and hardcore fan base. Okay. Unsurprisingly, far more people showed up and the line wrapped around the block. Wow. Fans were forced to wait in the hot California sun that rivaled a summer in New Delhi. It was oh, okay, go home. <laughs> this is the controversy. Go home. It was so bad they had to send Vernon out to provide water and sunscreen so no one died of heat stroke. Eventually, no pun intended. Okay, that sounds pretty responsible of them. Did the police shut? They 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 expected there to be very few people come to this event. 
and they were wrong, obviously. And then they tried to do their best to provide water and stuff. Okay. This controversy doesn't mean anything to me. Down the event. Yes, I know I'm cringe. Although it was a complete mess, Aaron implied the garage sale was successful to save face. What do you mean save face? What was the mess? Yes, I know I'm cringe. You are. Although it was a complete mess. Thank you again so much for people who participated, flew out, drove out, hung out, and took pics. Couldn't make it in time. Bought hotels. I mean, I'm floored at the response to this. Y'all are amazing to us. This was just a silly garage sale, but y'all made an event. Okay, that sounds perfectly. The The worst thing that they did was they should have been a little bit, and they should have been uh, expecting more people to show up, and that was ignorant of them. But that's not like this horribly intentional fucking controversial thing. This is silly. This is dumb. Like they got more people than they thought, and then people ended up having to be outside for like three hours. So they went out and they did their best to provide like water, uh, and it's even sunscreen, which is like very responsible. Potentially, you could argue a little bit above and beyond what they were expected to do, um, but I think it was a perfectly reasonable response. What's what's the problem with the controversy? And then you're saying that they're trying to frame it to be like better, like what not so bad. If I held a garage sale and I invited everybody to it, and like ten times the amount of people showed up that I thought would, and they were all my fans, and they came up and they showed like support and, and et cetera, et cetera, I'd be like, wow, like thank you so much. Much. I really appreciate like the overwhelming response. Thank you so much, everybody, to come out. That's being respectful to them, you know. Yes, Aaron implied the garage sale was successful to save face. Um, Game Grumps used to be a chill. He sold everything. It wasn't a face save. So channel about two dudes who love playing video games and having fun. Fans uh, were loyal, attached, and often watched every episode that came out. Okay. However, since 2013, Game Grumps was full of drama involving racism, inappropriate sexual conduct, doxing, and more. I mean, yeah. So none of those were really. The racism one kinda, the inappropriate conduct, not really. The doxing was shitty, but like it was a one-off thing. I feel like this is a lot of pearl clutching here, OJ. Even the former member John Tron managed to get into his own racial controversy after he left. Currently, the channel average. Yeah, he said that white people should be the only ones in America. So it's a little bit more than their controversies combined. Which is around two hundred to three hundred thousand. Where's your rise and fall, John Tron, OJ? You fucking asshole. Views per video, which is a significant decline from before when they would get. Left. Currently, the channel averages around 200 to 300,000 views per video, which is- What a shame. I never want to get two to 300,000 videos a video. Views a video. I never want that. that well, that's how you know that you're a loser. When you only get two fucking hundred thousand views a video, that's pathetic. Pathetic. I never want- I never want that. <laughs> that's fucking incredible. Are you kidding me? I get it. They're not as popular as they used to be. Uh, there's probably a myriad of reasons for that. Part of it's probably because they grew up and sort of their fans, you know, and it's harder to like, that's one of the things on like the internet is like you, well, you're a dude, you're a couple of the dudes or a couple of girls or a couple of thems, this, you know, and you start a channel when you're at a particular age and you appeal to people of a particular age of that time. And then as you get older, some fans fall off and they move on to other stuff. Maybe you accrue a couple new fans, but the next person's going to come up and they're going to replace you because they're more like relevant to the style of the kids of their era. You know what I mean? Like if you took anybody who's 14 years old when I was 14, if you took me at 14, let's say I was the cool 14 year old guy. <laughs> And you put me in today's group of 14 year olds, I'd be weird to them because it's just everything is so different. And that's kind of what the point is. I'm trying to get at this here. There's a significant decline from before when they would get two to three million. It's as clear as the Ganges River that their controversies have significantly damaged their reputation. Mm -hmm. Not to mention Aaron got absolutely bodied by Harley Morenstein at Creator Clash, losing by a TKO in the second round. I don't think that negatively impacted it. But okay. Sometimes in life, things don't go the way you expect and you just have to move on. But we shouldn't forget Game Grumps provide. Why would they move on? They're making 300, 200, 300,000 views a video. That's probably a lot of money. They're probably making, they're probably making a ridiculous amount of money, especially since those videos are like fucking 40 minutes long each. It's really good. They're probably getting solid viewership. Like, bro, I don't know what you're talking about. These guys are probably pulling in. I wouldn't be surprised if they're pulling in a million plus dollars a year collectively. So like, what are we talking about? Like, I, like that's the biggest problem is like, why would I consider that non-successful if they're pulling bank? Like, that seems really weird to me. Provided countless hours of entertainment to millions across the world. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Thanks, AJ. I wasn't a fan of that video, though. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And another special shout out to all my Patreon and Twitch subs. If you'd like to support this channel further than you already have by just watching the video alone, go down to the links below where you can sub on my Patreon, which will allow you to get your name on this beautiful black wall. <laughs> uh, or you can go to the Twitch page and you can actually use a free Amazon Prime sub, if you have Amazon Prime, to subscribe. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.